Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video we'll be covering a quite surprising popular strand titan build that I would never thought would make a return. The Kepri's Horn is one of these exotics that can work in the right environment and set up provided, but it's not anything that most players would want to use in endgame content. This has now changed with strand being introduced, and with the ability to suspend targets via the titan aspects, now is quite honestly the perfect time to explore what the exotic can offer. If you don't want to use the Obey and Leap for example, and want to try something different for once, then let me show you how good Kepri's is as an alternative. To start you're going to want to have Into the Frame, where destroying a Tangle or casting a Super grants Woven Mail for nearby allies. While you have Woven Mail, your melee regeneration is increased. Then you'll want to have Drenger's Lash, where activating your class ability will create a ripple in reality that forwards and suspends targets. It's similar to a bear leap build we did, and many others that you're familiar with. The best course of action here is to build into Strand, so that our suspend animation can work with conditional finality double effects it provides. As the exotic will freeze targets at first, and then apply an ignition straight after, it works perfectly against champions of all times as it makes it harder for them to escape while also doing additional damage we are given to exotics. Of course, you don't need to have the following exotic to make the build work, as any primary stasis or strand weapon can work. Looking into the fragments, Thread of Mind, upon suspending and defeating a target grants class ability. Thread of Transmutation, while you have Woven Mail, Weapon Viner Blows will create Tangle. Thread of Generation, dealing damage generates grenade energy. And Thread of Continuity increases the duration of Suspend, Unravel, and Sever. A Thread of Mind, Generation, and Continuity are the main big fragments that will play a big part in supporting the build from start to finish. Maximizing your Suspend capabilities to make it easier to use all your abilities as much as you like will allow weapons of choice to inflict the needed damage against those in GM environments, while also being able to generate enough energy straight back to a class ability and repeat. Weapons like Finality will be able to land a shot 100% more accurate compared to while on the go, and being able to produce enough energy for our class ability and grenades means that we can stop dire situations from happening at a moment's notice. For the mods and stats section, both resilience and discipline will play a big part within the build itself, but your melee will also help out when you get the opportunity to close a gap with your suspend abilities. I would recommend the stat to be a tier 5 to 7, as you won't be using it a lot. But considering the nature of Into the Frame aspect effect, you will be getting up quite fast so only use it when you get opportunity to do so. Your resilient stat needs to correspond with Kepri's effect so that we can use it as often as possible. A tier 8 to 10 is the general sweet spot that most people can aim for with the right mods and armor roll, although you can go to tier 7 as we do have further mind fragment available. If you do this, then this will free up some mod slots for you to further pick down the line if you can't make certain stats work in your favor. Your discipline now should be around tier 7, but can go higher depending on how often you tend to use frontal focus. The following mod will give you a plus 30 to your current discipline stat, and this will only be effective the longer you are charged with light. Suspend grenades have a standard cooldown rate of 2 minutes 32, and upon us having the frontal focus mod active and a tier 10, Basically working over time, this should reduce our grenade cooldown to a minute 20. This may seem slow, but once further generation is active as well, and grenade kickstart, impact induction, and bomber, this will feel a lot more shorter than presented. Because of how the build works with getting orbs of power and using them to empower our surge and kickstart mods, you may need to play around with this area before going forth, as I know not a lot of people would agree on mixing two mods that can cancel each other out. Personally, I will take the kickstart mod out and add something else as we can easily get our grenades back over time, and the damage mod provided will give us a huge leverage against majors and above combatants. While you are there, do add on the following armor charge mods, such as charged up times 2 which will allow us to hold on more armor charges as we play and collect them. From here, you can then add on the void cipher mod as we intend to make use of the bricks from Yon and volatile flow mod from the seasonal artifact while also using a weapon that has a pulse of brace on it for even more protection. Do be sure to add on the special ammo finder mod and the special finishing mod so that our weapons can always have ammo available, and then times 2 void weapon surge mod and time dilation mod for further support in this area. 
Now lastly, the weapons being used will be the additional finality shotgun from the Ron Raid. The weapon is amazing at destroying champions and tormentors on a higher difficulty, and it works out really well when combined with a strand build that can suspend targets easily. Although the effects of the weapon can cancel out the suspend effect, you can use this to your advantage for restunning if you need to revive a teammate or just need time to rethink how to approach a situation. You will have three ways to stun anything in your way, and the damage pulled off will make encounters a lot more easier to deal with. From here, I then decided to add on a void secondary and heavy so that we can make use of the volatile flow seasonal mod. If you have a weapon with a pulse place such as the Velax X, then pair it up with the following build and you'll get a nice extra layer of damage reduction. The idea here is that with the added overshield and volatile rounds being freely available this season, we may as well use the following combo as best as possible so that we can largely benefit from its effects from start to end of the season. On top of that, with match game modifiers now not a thing, we can use this in the higher end game content as much as we please, and thus expand our room of customization as we please. But do remember that this is solely a this season thing, as this is tied down to a mod we don't know if it will be coming back next season or what. So do pick any other void weapon you have in mind if you don't care about the areas you provided. The build at first looks quite hard to understand, as a lot of the gear and weapons being mixed matched are different to each other. However, the setup is rather simple to understand, with the main concept always being to use your shrine abilities as much as possible. It's like your usual strand titan build where you use your barricades to suspend targets, peek out and get the kills, then build up your abilities and then use them again, etc. Pretty basic stuff. However, once you add in the Kepri's, you get a bit of an extra kick to your barricades that can damage plus kill targets while also suspending them in one go, which makes it very handy for saving certain types of ammo when you need it. It's not a big revolution for using Exotic with the setup as compared to something like a Bayon Leap. It's only offering you something that can be easily swapped out and not make that huge of a impact. Using Strand on Titans will allow us to suspend targets that allows us to get a 60% damage reduction while also pairing this with a weapon with a positive brace which will give us an extra layer of defense as well. From there, our Exotic Shotgun can freely net kills at point blank range against most targets and properly proc its effect with a 100% uptime. It's a already pretty sweet setup when we last used it, but this one here simply allows us to do a bit more extra damage inside and make crowd control a tad easier. The build excels well on content where it's challenging and even in Grandmaster content, you can see it do well under pressure. Although nothing compelling, it's a nice option to keep in mind if you like to change up your build style here and there. But ultimately, what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like on the sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.